And the concept of average cluster size, so we are talking about the, the average cluster size. And this expression itself sounds just uh, too simple. And there's no alternative or there's no ambiguity. It, it doesn't look like it has some kind of ambiguity, but so that's why we can put like this article, the. But actually, each of this expression has some kind of tricky part. For example, when we talk about average, we are all familiar with this concept of average. So if you have this kind of bunch of discrete set, of course, the, the average we know is 1 over n times the sum of the older elements. So it's just too simple. But actually, since we are talking about the infinite size lattice and the possibility of the infinite size cluster, the problem can occur. For example, the first of all, the first problem can be what if a particular cluster called x sub k goes to infinity. Then, of course, the average, according to this definition, average should diverse as well. Then the problem is that we kind of lose every information about the, the other part of the finite cluster, for example, x1, xk minus 1, and xk plus 1, and etc. Then to characterize This set of finite cluster, we have to consider the average of all the finite cluster, except for this infinite cluster or percolating cluster. So, this kind of, so for example, This kind of averaging process may have some kind of meaning. We'll get back to this part later. And another part is, another tricky part is how to average. And if you are dealing with this kind of a simple data or the, some data point or the observation, there is no ambiguity at all because we can just average everything by just this simple way. But in fact, if we return to the freshman general physics course, we are kind of dealing with this kind of weight, the concept of weighted average. So for example, so if you have two particles with mass 1, mass 2, and the coordinate in one-dimensional system is this one. And what we have learned during our freshman physics course, or even high school physics course, is that the question can be, what's the average position of the system compo composed of the two particles with mass m1 and m2. And this is actually not quite definite question, actually. For example, if we just ignore the mass, then we can just, as trivially, we can just use a simple average, like, of course, it's in the middle, exactly in the middle. 
or explicitly average of the two positions. But actually, in terms of all the dynamical property or the law of physics, we already learned that there's an alternative answer is that we have to consider a concept called a center of mass. Because suppose this M1 and M2 are very different, then in every sense, we have to consider some biased location for a representative position. So, so this is caused by this definition of the momentum conservation, etc. But I will not return to that freshman physics. But we already know that the center of mass should be it's a denominator is a sum of mass, and of course you know that m one x one times m two x or You can write down this as this. So these two coefficients are some kind of a fraction between zero and one. So it's an example of a, what we called weighted average. And so it has this meaning. So this is equivalent to the assumption that M1 must be composed of M1 amounts of unit particles or something. And this same M2 amounts of unit particles. And if we assume this situation, the simple average should actually equivalent to this second alternative definition of center of mass because if we try to do that, we will add this x1 with the m1 times and x2 m2 times so the average should be like this so why we are talking about this because of course when we talk about the percolation cluster we are actually dealing with this kind of situation so, so we can treat this each cluster as a single unit, but just like the center of mass, the concept of center of mass I just described, by definition, this big cluster, the largest cluster in fact here, the this big cluster composed of five sides has actually five units by definition. So we are returning to the question. So we can either treat this each cluster as a single unit or treat each site as a single unit. And the fact that if we are really interested in the each site, then suppose we select each site at random, uh, completely at random, and suppose we are interested in the average size of cluster to which a randomly chosen site belongs. Then if we compare these cases, for example, since we have three of size one cluster and just the one size five cluster, so you may reach a wrong conclusion that if we take a single site and probability that 
each site belong to the size one cluster or size five cluster is actually so the probability for a randomly chosen site belong to a size one cluster is three times of the probability that a randomly chosen site belong to the size five cluster. Actually, this is just a very simple exercise, so you already know the answer is wrong because. Of course, the proportion or the ratio between the probability of being belonging to this each this uh, three size one cluster is actually smaller than the probability for a single randomly chosen site belong to this size five cluster because purely because of the situation here, this. Even if there is only one uh, size five cluster, it takes five sites by definition. So the chances are actually three versus five, not three versus one. So that is the essence of the this different way of averaging. More general question is the distribution of cluster size, but let's start to talk about average cluster size first. So as I already mentioned, the average size of the cluster in the kind of literal sense by dealing, by treating each cluster as a single unit is of course the familiar form. It's the, yeah, it's sum everything and divided by the uh, number of site, uh, number of clusters, not site. But this, particular way or particular form or alternative form of averaging is each cluster is weighted according to its size and accordingly it gives more weight to larger cluster. And what's the meaning of this as I already mentioned? So on if we choose on an on, unoccupied or no if you choose an occupied site at random, how large on average is the cluster to which this occupied site belongs? And this is the, the description I introduced already last week. 